So I didn't really have a concrete plan when I made this channel a few weeks ago. But what I think this whole thing is going to be about, the entire point of this, is going to be a discussion around movies. Specifically, movies I like, movies I don't like, movies I basically just want to talk about. I have a list of specific topics I want to get to eventually. Uh, now that I have this kind of planned out, I guess you can say that I actually know where I'm going with it. I'm going to try to make these uploads more regular at least. So in this first one, I don't count the Woody Allen one as the first one. That was more of a test run to see what I can do. Um, I'm still learning, obviously. These videos are kind of shit, but, you know, I'll get better eventually, I'm hoping. We're going to talk about a new movie that came out in 2019, directed by Jeremy Clappen, called I Lost My Body. Not only this, however, we're talking about another animated movie that just came out on Netflix. It came out in 2017 originally, though, called MFKZ, or Motherfuckers, depending on your edginess, I guess. I saw her. I saw her. So the thing with these two movies, uh, they're both French animated, which is weird, specific genre that I didn't know I would love so much and that I want so much more of now that I've seen both of these movies. So how we're going to do this is I'm going to review both of them separately. And then actually the kind of topic of this video I wanted to go over from the title, you could probably tell, is I want to compare and contrast them because this is such a niche genre. I thought it'd be super interesting to actually see their similarities and some of the some of the traits they share you could say so first up is going to be i lost my body um so this movie dropped i want to say about a month ago i should probably look up the dates i can easily do that but i'm too lazy but uh i never heard about it i never saw any promotional footage i never saw anything and so i was just scrolling through netflix as i do most nights and i saw oh this looks this looks kind of interesting right so i clicked on it realized it was french animated and i was super into it and then, after kind of the first 10 minutes, I realized I was actually in for quite a treat. It's super good animation, really fleshed out characters that I could really relate with, especially the main one. Uh, the voice acting, I thought, was quite a highlight, actually, especially the main voice actor. I don't even know his name. I should probably look that up, too. But just, just the softness in his voice added so much character to him. I really, it was really hard to not watch this movie again as soon as I just watched it. I really loved everyone in it. Boy. You're very proud of yourself. A life I'd forgotten. Are you okay? I had another family. A mother. A brother. I can still see their faces. The music was absurd and amazing, and I've never heard French rap before, but this made me want to listen to it every day. Which was weird, it was only in the movie for about 10 seconds, but I was fucking bumping it, let me tell you. This movie, I think the best part about it is how just beautiful it looks. I don't want to sound like weird when I say beautiful, but I mean this movie is just stunning to look at. The The animations are so fluid and nice. Uh, every every shot has so much detail to it, especially the landscapes of the city. Oh my god, don't even get me started. It looks so good. I'm sure you can see from some of the clips that I'm showing that it's pretty evident how much care and passion was put into a movie like this. Uh, I believe I gave this a four and a half stars on Letterbox. If you want to follow my Letterbox, the link will be in the description. I have like four followers, but I have some good reviews in there. I, I, I like to think at least if you're interested. So just a little plot summary for some of you who've never heard of it or haven't seen it on Netflix or anything yet. Uh, the plot revolves around a young man in his dismembered hand. Um, right there you might be turned off saying that's ridiculous or absurd, but trust me, just stick with it. It is, it is worth getting past this little speed bump. It's, it's not linear storytelling, storing, storytelling, but I think it really works for this movie because you see the hand's point of view trying to get back to the body and you also see the main guy, how he gets to the point where he loses his hand. It's super well written, very well smart out. I'm really jealous of it, honestly. <laughs> now the hand is probably the most divisive part of this movie and probably while some people won't watch it because it's too much out there. But trust me, as soon as the first scene you get with the hand, I mean, you're kind of there for it. You kind of already believe that it's happening. You don't even have to think about that it doesn't have any eyes or 
isn't connected to anything or at all. You kind of just get over that. And I did, at least anyways. I just suspended my disbelief. It worked pretty well. I didn't even think about it the rest of the movie. But um, the hand does provide comedic levity. He has some action scenes as well that uh, really help out the music unfold better because the music is pretty high uh, intensity here. But the other best part is the emotional moments. Uh, the hand definitely brings uh, the montages. I mean, I'm sure if you watch the movie or seen the trailers at all, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> They're so well shot and animated, and it's like, oh, it, just, it makes me want to be a kid again. It makes me really respect my hands, which is like, what? A movie can even do that? Who knew? But anyways, I'm rambling. In conclusion, uh, 9 out of 10. Go watch it on Netflix right now. It, it's, it's a short movie. It's worth it. Watch it by yourself or with friends. doesn't even matter. It's worth it. Just do it. Okay, so moving on. Moving on to MFKZ. Now... Again, never heard of this movie, never heard of the graphic novel that came before it. I saw it appeared on my Netflix timeline, and I said, Oh my god, <laughs> another French animated movie, what the hell is going on? So I had to watch it. It looked a little anime, not into anime, but I was like, you know, the last French animated movie I saw blew me away. I might as well give it a shot, right? It was directed by a French dude and a Japanese dude. Uh, Guame Renard and Shujiru Nishimi definitely mispronounced him, it's fine um, it is, it incorporates some western style, I think for, it, it kind of, kind of very slightly, you can see some hints of I Lost My Body's type of animation in there but it is mainly Japanese inspired, I want to say especially some of the character designs you know, I, I never heard of this movie so when I was watching it, I had to look it up and to my surprise it had pretty negative reviews which was weird because I was thoroughly enjoying it at this point. Now, there's really a lot of talent behind this movie, which is weird because it is such an obscure type of premise, you can say. Like, I mean, just look at this art that comes with it. But, like, for example, they got Vince Staples to voice one of the main characters. They have Riza from Wu-Tang in there. And they got Danny Trejo to voice the bad guy. I mean, they, there's some like, serious acting talent, and, you know, they clearly got people that was passionate about this project and knew the graphic novel before. So it was weird to see this kind of lukewarm, to kind of even cold reception of a movie like this. Not only is the talent there in the voice cast, but the animation is just as stunning. Um, it's definitely more janky. I think that's more the anime style. Like, they just talk, and their mouths kind of just move up and down sometimes. But... Uh, where the animation really shines, and I think where they blew most of their budget, just on the way it looks, is the action scenes. What do they want? There's no way you two can run forever. I'm gonna enjoy putting you... And oh my god, is it worth it just to watch it for the action scenes? The action scenes are dope, and by far the best part of the movie, but what really increases their intensity and really sticks them out and the main thing I love about this movie is the music the music is so good in this it raises the tensions way higher than anything you'd ever expect honestly especially during those action scenes oh my god it like melds together so well it is literally I'm telling you right now worth watching because of those scenes now like I said before this movie is not perfect this movie is very clunky in parts it doesn't have the best script in parts it has a very weird storyline in parts and I think it exceeds the limit it needs to in some points. That might sound weird, but it kind of goes over the top is what I'm trying to say. Now, don't get me wrong. 99% of this movie is completely over the top. But just, they, they try to do these themes, these overarching themes about world pollution and government corruption and blah, 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 all this stuff that you wouldn't really expect in a movie like this. And it is a little ham-fisted and a little out there and kind of takes you out of it because they just have these exposition scenes that just go on and on and on. And it's, that's, that's where this movie struggles, I'd say. If, the, if this movie didn't have those, I think this would have a much bigger release, much bigger fan base, which I think it honestly deserves, even though they are these scenes. It's just... I don't know. I wish they weren't there. So on Letterbox, um, I think I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I think I was just writing high at this point, though, because... I, I did enjoy, maybe not the f full ending, but the 
the kind of action-y ending, the climax, I guess you can say, action-y ending, what the fuck does that even mean? Climax, I enjoyed the climax of the movie. Uh, it had some personal struggles, and it was actually character growth in there, which was surprising, coming from a, like an animated movie, action movie like this, I mean, really? But I think uh, on rewatch, I watched it a second time with a group of friends, actually, and I think the issue stuck out a little bit more the second time, sadly, so I think I might have to go back and change that, maybe do a three and a half, three stars, but I still think it is definitely worth your time. It's only a three stars because of those clunky dialogue scenes, I swear. So, another quick plot summary. Uh, this dude, Angelino, the, the black uh, thing he is, uh, and his roommate Vins, uh, basically go on an adventure full of government conspiracies and all this due to uh, Angelino being a subject of tests and basically he interests the world government quite a lot and so they go after him and he has to run away with Vins and his other friend Willie the one you can see right now the weird looking one but I guess they're all weird looking but the one with braces I guess I don't know so they're basically on the run from the government this entire time but while they're on the run for the government they live in a really shitty neighborhood and so they're running away from these government soldiers but they're also running away from the gang members that constantly want to kill them and basically the circumstances that they're used to. So in that case, it is really intriguing. I really do like the neighborhoods they set up. They set them up to be like really, really shitholy. And it looks like uh, whoever wrote the graphic novel definitely has experienced something like this because they do feel very real. They are over the top like everything else in the movie, but they do feel somewhat um, feasible, I guess you can say. Like someone could actually live in a neighborhood like this nowadays. But anyways, I got off topic. Uh, so I'd say 7, 6.5 out of 10 now. Um, definitely worth a watch. Watch it now. The action scenes are fucking amazing. 10 out of 10 action scenes. 7 out of 10 movie. How about that, huh? Alright, so the reviews are out of the way. You got my verdict on both of them. Both pretty high scores, I'd say. But now comes the main point of this video. And I know this video is already long as hell. But man... We're still going, all right? If you're watching, then holy shit. But now we get to compare and contrast these films. So as I said before, these are both French animation, um, which is, again, a niche genre. You don't see a lot of these movies all the time. There's like three that I've known of ever being made, and that's like these two and The Fantastic Planet, which came out like forever ago. So I thought discussing them and comparing and contrasting maybe similar themes, Similar ideas used in both could be a little fun and interesting. I ran out of pictures to use, so now I'm just using a bunch of French things. Baguette, baguette, baguette. Fuck, I kind of want French toast now. Alright, so to start off, we're going to be contrasting, because I think comparing is the more interesting one. We're saving the best for last, you know? So contrasting, there's clear differences. Uh, animation style again. Uh, motherfuckers completely... Uh, uses way more, borrows from Japanese culture, and you, you, uh, more, you know, with the anime style, especially uh, the Japanese director clearly pushed for this, and I think the graphic novel was even kind of like a manga in its own. So, uh, the style change is definitely different here, that's a big contrasting factor. Uh, not only with this animation, I should probably change this picture, oh my god. So not only with animation, as I was saying, but uh, the tone, I think the tone is one of the biggest differences, I think, the overall tone. There's still some character tones and motivations that are kind of similar, but just the overall tone of the entire story uh, is way different from each other. I Lost My Body, for example, is gentle. Like I said, the main character is very gentle. Uh, he's fragile, you can tell, and that's kind of what the movie reflects, is this relatability of not knowing where you belong. He's definitely in a state of time in his life where he has no direction. And it is one of the most relatable things I've ever seen in a movie. And it was an animated movie, no less, which is cool. But, so this one's much, I, I wouldn't want to say darker or bleaker, but it's more reserved, and more anxious, I want to say. I think reserved is a really good word for it. It's more reserved. Um, there's a lot to it. There's not just, 
Basically, what I'm trying to say is the tone is like the main character, and he's reserved and quiet and is scared. Okay, so I'm sure you can tell from this, uh, just this poster alone, I guess, that this movie is way less reserved and more over the top. I've been saying that this entire video now. So, that's clearly the biggest difference, I think, is the tone of the main story. Like, this story's grand and adventurous, and I Lost My Body is very personal and interconnected with just this one character, while this one involves the entire world, including luchador wrestlers for some reason. So, it's definitely one of the biggest differences you can tell so between the animation style and the tone of each one. Uh, there's not many similarities uh, in those respects, anyways. Okay, the next big difference, this will be the last one we go through, since uh, I'm taking about 300 years of anyone's time that decides to watch all the way through this, including mine. But, so, the next big difference is the main characters. I've mentioned them a lot. I've mentioned that I've liked the one from I Lost My Body a lot. I haven't mentioned much of MFKZ yet, but uh, I'll sing his praises here in a second. So I'm going to talk about No Fell first. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think that's how they said it in the movie. I'm not even sure. But like I said many times, the tone reflects his character a lot. He's quiet. He's reserved. He doesn't go out there much. Um, the thing I really love about him, the thing I love about this movie, is uh, the way they show his childhood. And you might have been seeing the clips I've been showing, but um, the astronaut, for example, plays a big role in this. Same with the piano and both his parents. Like, this kid, him as a kid, had so many dreams and aspirations. They literally, like, the opening scene is him saying he wants to be a pianist and also an astronaut. <laughs> To see him after just one one bad thing happens to him. I won't spoil it right away, but I'm sure you can imagine. Um, not only all of his passions gone, all of his motivations gone, all of his will to live is basically gone. Um, his family doesn't like him. He doesn't like his family. And just his low self-esteem, he doesn't care about anything. It's all relatable. We've all felt like this at least once in our lives before, and this just shows it and captures it perfectly. And that's, I said I liked his voice earlier, but the main thing that kept me watching during this movie, this might sound weird, but right when I started it, the first time I watched it, just his voice. I don't know what it was about his voice. I think I had a fucking thing for his voice. I don't know. His voice was just so soothing to me. It was so quiet. It kind of reminded me of my own voice, because I don't speak loudly at all. I'm sure you can tell I've like, been whispering through half these goddamn videos. But it just sounded so natural, and like, like he was a real character in like, the real world. It was wild. Anyway, I'm rambling again. But yes, he's a great, great central protagonist. I cheer for him the entire time. I see myself in him in a lot of ways. Angelino, on the other hand, stud. Just kidding. No, I love Angelino just as much, I'd say, if not more. Um, now this guy, uh, you, you see what happened to him as a kid, kind of the same thing actually, okay? Speaking of uh, similarities, we'll be getting with that later, but uh, their origins at least are somewhat similar, I want to say. But uh, as a person, he lives in this shitty environment, he wants to get out of here. Uh, the biggest difference, I think, between these characters is the family aspect. So for example, Nofel, he does have a family. He doesn't like them, he moves away as soon as he can, as soon as he finds any reason to leave them, he does. Angelino, on the other hand, even when he has so many reasons to leave them and to never see them again, to protect them and, pro and to protect him many times. One of my favorite scenes in the movie, actually, is all about this. Uh, he actually goes back into his old neighborhood, into all this danger, all this gang violence, all this government violence, just to go help his friend, who annoys him 99% of the time. He's just really selfless, and he's a complete character as well. I think he's really well rounded out, no pun, because his head's so round. But I think he has motivations. I think the one thing they did kind of miss out on was the, the romance part of it. Uh, that was never developed a lot, and it was kind of felt cheap towards the end. But other than that, his, his relationship with Vins, I think, gives this movie the most... Uh, the best parts, I want to say, because they have such great chemistry together. The voice actors go really well together. I think it's Vince Staples plays Vince. Uh, he's the skeleton boy. I don't know if he, you can see him, but 
Vince, I'm gonna need you to sit your ass down and buckle the fuck up! Why? What are you doing? What I'm doing is fucking handling it! No, 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 no! They, they, they really do carry this movie, I think, and I think it's because their two characters have so much chemistry and they're really in this situation together. I think they think of each other more as brothers than they do as friends at this point. And that's what I really love to see in this movie. I, I really did love that. That was my favorite part by far. Second favorite, besides the action scenes. Sorry, I lied. In case you didn't get this before, it's french fries. I just wanted to point that out. Oh my god, I still have so much left. Okay. There's plenty other differences here. Um, it'd take me about uh, 300 years to go through them all. I'm sure some of them are pretty surface level, you can definitely see. Some are more uh, tiny and you, they don't really matter in the full scheme of things. So I'm just going to end it off here with the differences and the contrasting. And we can finally get into the entire point of this video, 17 minutes in, which is stupid long. Oh my god, I don't even know if I'd watch this for 17 minutes. But we're going to get into comparing these two movies. Okay, this might sound unbelievable, but the music in these two movies actually, I swear to you, are insanely similar. This is the reason why I made this entire video, because I watched I Lost My Body, and I noticed the music right away. It's, it's pretty, pretty ridiculous how hyped that music gets, especially for such like a reserved movie. And then I watched this one, like, literally a week later, and I was like, what the heck? They have, like, the same music choices, except one of them is an action-packed adventure. And the other one, it's like a romance story. It's like, how can they both succeed in both their fields successfully, but still somehow use the same music? And it just blew my mind. Now, uh, the music they chose um, is very very new wave <laughs> is that the word i don't know it reminds me of tron legacy which is weird because no movie has reminded me of that score since that movie came out because that was daft punk famously you know but they were like techno and just high action and it was, it was like new and it was like relatable it was like music i could actually relate to in a weird way in a weird way like I could listen to that music and not watch a movie and still be satisfied with that music like, like let's say if I'm going say if I'm jumping an ice cream truck over a fucking gorge that's the music I'd be listening to and they, they captured it both in both movies so perfectly because even though uh, Nofell is like depressed for like 85% of the movie he's still listening to this fucking hardcore bumping rap and even his hand is going through all these crazy scenes where his hand is almost getting chopped up in a little bits constantly and eaten by rats. He's just fucking, this, this just hardcore, you know, like dubstep almost, it's just blasting. It's so good, I don't know, it, it just elevated all the emotions, all the stakes. It just, it made both these movies such a fucking joy to watch. That's why I've been recommending them all over the place. I swear to you, it's all the music. So I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about their differences, actually, but... Uh, their origin story, I thought was probably the most interesting part. I mean, the music got me started on this, but their origin story, I thought, I started making connections between them. I was like, well, they were both at a young age when some tragedy happened to them. Uh, they had big dreams, like they were meant for something special in the grand scheme of things. And because of that tragedy in the beginning, they get put in a bad neighborhood with bad people all around them only to finally later in life go on an adventure basically and figure out what their worth is like it's weird like the main two characters go on the same journey of self-discovery here and they're different characters at the core but they go through the same path it's fucking wild like really b both french animated movies that came out on netflix a week apart had the same exact origin story for their main two heroes all right so and that's all I got. Those were the two big similarities that I thought were just kind of insane, if you really think about it. Because they came out two years apart. I don't know. Alright, anyways. Sorry. Anyways. In conclusion. Sorry for wasting all of your time. 
about this thing that impacts you in no way whatsoever, that only interests me. But I, I wanted to talk about it, so I talked about it. And if you listened, you listened. So, thanks for watching. Those are my thoughts on two French animated movies. Now, alright, I'm going to be real with you. I have no idea where this channel is going to go. I don't, I, I, I have some videos planned out, like I said. I don't know when I'm going to get to them. I'm going to try to pump these out as, as many as I possibly can at all times. I'm going to just, I'm going to try to grind this as much as I can. So if you hate my voice, fucking get used to it. I guess. That sounded cooler in my head. That sounded so corny. Oh my god. Anyways, thanks for watching. Sorry about this. Wasting your time. Okay, bye.